Welcome back. You may have been noticing a lot of changes in your neighborhood lately. Today is March 20th, and it's the first day of spring. So happy spring to all of you. And you might ask yourself, what's so special about March 20th? Well, March 20th is the spring equinox. So today we'll have equal hours of daylight and darkness. And that's the same for most every place on the Earth right now. This is the time of year when there are more changes occurring here in nature all around us than at any other time of the year. We're seeing the snow is starting to melt. It's above zero now and uh, it's still a little bit cooler than zero at night. But I imagine that the spring sap run for making maple syrup has probably ended by now. And maybe you've even started to notice uh, new animals out. I, I saw today the chipmunks were back and, and active again. And I've heard some birds that I haven't heard since they left in the fall on their migration. Today we're going to be exploring some of the signs of spring that you can be on the lookout for in your neighborhood. If you've been following along with us each week, you should have gotten pretty good at making observations in nature. And to help you with that, I'm going to ask you to have some tools at hand. If you've been using a nature journal, make sure you have that ready. If not, just paper and pencil and things to record the observations that you make in the natural world. Um, I'm going to include links below to some of the ways that we as a staff at the Outdoor Ed Centers like to record our own observations in nature. So some ideas for nature journaling. Uh, using your smartphone, finding the apps that might help support you as you're learning more about the natural world. And organizations that you can reach out to and connect with. Think of spring as a new start, a new beginning really. And those creatures, all those living things that have been dormant away for the winter uh, in order to survive, they're now arriving back in Ottawa or they're coming out of that period of dormancy or hibernation and they're starting to be very active again. So join us as we start to explore the signs of spring that are all around us. One of the first changes that we see in the spring is the changes that start to happen in the trees around us. Deciduous trees like these are dormant in the winter and come springtime, the conditions are perfect for them to begin to grow again. The number of daylight hours increase, which provides trees and plants a chance to use that extra sunlight to grow. The temperature of the soil and the air warms. And also insects and pollinators and animals move around more and that helps to spread seeds and pollinate the flowers that plants and trees create. Some of the evidence that trees are beginning to grow again are uh, the um, buds that are emerging at the ends of each of the twigs. So this willow tree is beginning to bud and you can see the white fuzzy buds that it creates. Some of the other trees that bud early in the spring are maple trees. Sometimes if you look way up you can see the red uh, color at the ends of the maple twigs and that's the maple flower coming out and the flower comes out before the leaves begin to form. So the creation of buds and the emergence of catkins and leaves are some of the early changes that happen in the deciduous trees. My challenge for you this week is to head outside and look for some of the changes that are beginning to happen in the trees and plants in your community. I've come across something really exciting that caught my attention when I looked very closely. So what we have here are something called a snow flea or a springtail. So you may think, oh, fleas, I don't want fleas near me. Well, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these snow fleas here in the forest, but they're not like fleas that your cat or dog would get, um, but they do have some similar characteristics. Take a look at the close-up of this snow flea. It actually uses its tail to spring from spot to spot. So it's not like fleas because they actually jump from spot to spot. The snow flea or the springtail uses its tail to spring itself. We notice the snow fleas in the winter time because the dark 
bluish black color of the snow flea contrasts with the snow, meaning that since they're a dark color, they really stand out on the white snow. And if you look really closely, you can see them hopping or again, springing with their tail from place to place. These snow fleas are actually around all year long and they're underneath close to the leaf litter where all those dead decaying leaves are on the ground of the forest floor and on warm winter days when there's still snow they come up uh, around tree trunks and make their way onto the snow looking for other sources of food so they feed off of that decaying dead plant matter. When I see or think about springtails or snow fleas, one of the coolest things that I think about them is that they are so tiny, they only measure about one to two millimeters, and they themselves can spring themselves up to 12 inches of distance. That is like me jumping in one single jump the length of two football fields, wow. In the springtime, we are not the only ones that want to get out and enjoy the warmer weather. Some insects spend the winter as adults sheltered in the forest, maybe tucked under tree bark or underneath the soil. These insects we'll see come out in the early spring are bees, flies, and maybe even some mosquitoes. One type of butterfly also spends the winter as an adult here. That is the morning cloak butterfly. Another butterfly that you probably know is the monarch butterfly. They migrate in the winter time to Central America and right now are making their journey back to Ontario where we'll start to see them in the later spring. My challenge for you this week is to get out in your neighborhood or local green space and look for some of these early spring insects. Can you hear all those different sounds? I'm here at the BMC wetland today and there is more activity here than there has been in weeks and months. And that's because all of the birds that left uh, in the fall for their fall migration down south have quickly been returning back to Ontario and the Ottawa area. Now I'm curious, when we think of spring, what are some of the first bird sounds or calls that you think of um, or the first birds that make you think of spring. I'm gonna play a call of one that I'm thinking of and I'm curious to see if this is the one that you're thinking of too. So listen in. Do you know which bird is making that call? You guessed Robin, you're right. Now I'm playing this call because this is the one that I'm thinking of first in spring but it's actually not the best indicator of spring. Uh, robins sometimes even spend the entire winter here in Ottawa. Not all of them will, but some do. And I actually saw the first robin back in February. So if I thought of that as the first bird of spring, well, it's been a long couple of weeks since that point and we have had a lot more snowy winter weather since I saw that robin um, months ago. Another bird that might think, make you think of spring is the one that was making calls in David's introduction to this video. Do you remember that sound? I'll play it for you again. Which bird is making that call? If you guessed the can of the goose, you are right. But again, this bird is not a great indicator of spring. As more of them return to the area, you know spring is definitely on its way. But some of these birds also do spend the entire winter here now in Ontario, especially in the southern parts of Ontario, where sometimes lakes, rivers, and streams don't completely freeze over. Now I'm gonna play another bird call for you that indicates spring. Um, these birds spend a lot of time within wetland habitats, just like where I am today, and I can hear some calling behind me. So listen into this and see if you can recognize or if you know which bird this call comes from. Sounds like conclery. If you guessed red-winged blackbird, that's correct. And there are many red-winged blackbird males that first return to the area to claim their territory for the summer. 
and in the coming weeks uh, we will then have the females return but they come a couple weeks after the males have already been here for a while so when the males come we know spring is it's getting closer to spring but when the females come that's when we know things are really warming up I love this post that was shared on the Wild Bird Care Center's Instagram page over the last couple weeks. It shows a sliding scale of the birds and how they might indicate where we are in spring. As you can see, the robin and the Canada goose are at the bottom. So again, they're not really reliable indicators of spring because some of them spend the whole winter here. But as we start having more of them come back to the area, you notice lots more robins and lots more geese that's letting you know that spring might be on its way. Next, you can see that there's the red-winged blackbird, but it's just the male that returns. And then once the female comes, we're getting that much closer to spring. Lastly, once you notice the herons and osprey returning to this area, we're, we're on our way to summer at that point. My challenge to you this week is to get outside, start listening to the sounds that you're hearing all around you. Which ones belong to birds? Which ones belong to other animals? Maybe take some binoculars with you. And I would like you to identify three birds that are different than the ones that we talked about today that were not here in the winter time. So ones that are just migrating back to this area to spend the rest of the summer. Good luck. Well, happy spring morning from the vanishing pond here at the Bill Mason Center. And it may not look like it right now, but this really is an amazing sign of spring. There's some of the ice is still pretty solid and some of it's a lot thinner as it got pretty chilly last night. So the top layer of water is frozen, but that doesn't mean that later today, frogs like our leopard frog, spring peepers, and maybe even the wood frogs might start coming to visit this pond. As it starts to warm up a little bit more, these frogs will definitely be making this pond their home. And that makes me so excited. In a few weeks, we'll be able to hear the wood frogs croaking to one another, looking for a mate. Here's a short little video that I was able to capture a couple years ago, closer towards the end of April. Notice how it sounds almost as if they're quacking, like ducks quacking. Would you believe that these little wood frogs are the ones making that sound? It really excites me when I hear these sounds because to me it means that spring is actually here. Sometimes in the evenings if you live near water, you might hear the high-pitched peep, peep sound like this of our spring peepers. Now they're small little frogs and their sound can be heard for up to two kilometers sometimes. So far I've heard them a couple of evenings where it was a still a little bit warmer once the sun was setting. So keep an ear out for those as well. I'm really excited that spring is coming and that soon we will be able to see and hear these frogs a lot more commonly. So here we are, March 22nd, 2021, at the edge of the man-made lake. And it is the second full day of spring and signs of spring are everywhere. This is a leopard frog that I just startled as I was walking along the shore. It actually jumped onto the ice to get away. So I brought it back to shore and I will put it back in the water when I'm done showing him to you. But it's just such an exciting time seeing all of these creatures coming out of their hibernation. So many amphibians, what they do in the winter time, they don't actually bury themselves in the mud. They, there is a higher oxygen content in the water. So they stay on top of the mud and they stay in the water over winter and they create something like antifreeze. So what happens is they have higher sugar content in their blood so that the crystals that form aren't sharp. So they actually have ice crystals that form in their blood once the temperatures get below minus five degrees. But um, 
once it starts to warm up like these days that we've been having recently they start to thaw and oftentimes they will thaw within a day and then just hop away so the fact that this one was out and about and look at this it's moving and getting a lot more active it's ready to go and you know it's just still got that nice soft gentle um kind of skin and I'm just so excited. The frogs are out. The amphibians are coming. Uh, there's another one here in the water, uh, right close to me, kind of squirming around a little. Definitely also warming up, and soon these guys will be all out in the grass and ready to go. Oh, let's see what we can do. If I can get this other one, give me a second here. Oh, it's actually on top of the ice as well. Maybe I can help it out. Just speeding up the process a little bit by holding it in my hand. So it's still a little bit frozen. I don't want to manipulate its arms very much because I could break them. So I'm just going to hold it in my hand and let my body heat and the sun help to warm it up a little bit. Uh, so again, with these leopard frogs, uh, the bigger one had some bronze color, but it actually started turning a little bit more green as it was warming up in my hand. This one has green and then has the typical um, square kind of oval shapes on its back and then the dorsal line so runs over its eye and down its body one way that we can identify the different types of frogs are the colorings and of course that dorsal line there we go already getting a little bit more movement there just with a little bit of my body heat helping to thaw it out a little bit so something that I want to challenge you to do this week is to listen for the sounds and sights so looking for evidence of frogs. Well there you have it. It's been two weeks since I started making this video back on March 20th, our first day of spring, and things have really been up and down here in Ottawa. There's still a little bit of snow lingering, but uh, we've had some really warm weather and we've had nights where it's dropped down to minus 15 again. Um, I think those days are just about gone now. I'm hearing more birds. I am noticing that the buds are coming out on so many of the, the trees now. And I imagine by the time you're watching this that you've probably been noticing a lot of things in your neighborhood, these changes of spring that we mentioned throughout the video. So just a quick recap for you. As you're out and exploring your neighborhood, you continue to make observations in nature. Remember to have some way to record them, whether you're using an electronic device or you're using a, a good old nature journal to record your observations. Um, involve other people, share what you're finding, and tap into some of the resources that are listed in the description of the video below. Right? So there is some information that, that we put together about journaling. There are a lot of the organizations that we go to and some of the apps that you can use. So check those things out. And once again, remember to engage all of your senses when you're out there exploring in the spring. Things are going to be changing so quickly. Uh, it's an exciting time of the year and I'm interested to hear what you guys are discovering in your neighborhoods. So please share that with your teachers, share it with us, and in a couple of weeks, we'll revisit what's going on in Ottawa here in the spring and look at some of the new changes that have come up in that time. So thanks again for joining us. It's always great to see you here, and I hope that you're out exploring, having fun, and staying safe.